welcome to Mike's Greenhouse. There's quite a lot to do. Let's get going. First of all, our pumpkin has uh, definitely grown a lot since the last episode because all this hot weather has been boosting pretty much everything to grow. Our early bird sweet corn is just beginning to grow. The others, they're still just on their form uh, that they have been for the past few episodes, but this one is now starting to shoot, which is good, because once they start growing, they don't stop. Three of our strawberries are flowering. We've got this one here, this big one here, and this small one down here. The other ones are all starting to form their buds, so hopefully in the next episode I'll be able to update you on those too. As you can see, our radishes are growing like wildfire, and next to them, I've started to plant my courgettes as they grow. So I have a couple up here, but these just aren't big enough to plant yet, so I've got them in here. Moving on, tomatoes are, oh, as always, growing. I thought I needed to move those the other day, but unfortunately, I didn't. They're still not big enough, which is a shame, because... I'd like to get them potted up as soon as possible. As you can see, our mixed pansies are really doing well now. And there's some little green shoots now from the begonia, so I'm hoping that means they're growing, but they might just be weeds. As you can see, our sweet pea are doing well as well, which is always good. And as always, the marigolds have grown about a foot more. <laughs> Yeah, these are doing really well. I'm very, very impressed with my marigolds. So, I can't do a Mike's Greenhouse episode without showing off my uh, entry for the BCSS competition on the 19th next month, which is going to be fun. I cannot wait for it, and, uh, well, hopefully I do well. And next to those, all of our sensitive plants are starting to sprout. I say all of them, most of them are. Most of them have roots at least. And there's so many of them too. I really need to repot these soon. But now to today's episode. So, first of all, about Christmas time, I bought a garlic. I was going to put it in some. Well, basically, I was, I was cooking some meals for family and. I didn't need the garlic in the end because I bought too many. So anyway, I had it in the fridge and the other day I noticed it had started to shoot. So I thought the best thing to do was put it into some soil and water it. And they're doing quite well because at the time there were only three shoots. And that was about a week ago, if that. I didn't update you on it then purely because there was no point because nothing had happened with them. They were, yeah... They, they weren't so good, so anyway, I'm updating you now, but keep getting sidetracked to today's episode. So today, about two hours ago, if that, this arrived in the post, so it's called a Triceros, it's basically from Triceros Shop, um, from eBay, it's a company that runs through, so it's all things carnivorous, it says. So... At first, I didn't know what this was, because I've ordered quite a few things from eBay recently. I was trying to think of all of the carnivorous plants I've ordered. And I think this is either Venus flytrap or pitcher plant. There's a business card. This is good, because I, I ordered these not that long ago, which is why I didn't think it would be these. So, first of all, it comes with these biodegradable pots. There's three of them. Then it comes with a leaflet, I suppose it says how to do it, and it's also got seeds. Yeah, so those are the seeds in that little bag. Ah, uh, Venus flytrap. So, I know what it is now. That's good. So, there aren't many seeds, but that's because you don't need that many. And a bag of... I'm going to assume... Ericaceous compost. But I'm not sure. It looks like ericaceous, but I could be wrong. And this is obviously like a little mini greenhouse thing that comes with it, which is cool. 
So if you don't have a greenhouse, you just put it in this. You know, keep it nice and warm, which is it's a good idea. I like that. So I better stock it unpacking then. Okay, so after reading the instructions, it says I have to use rainwater. So using my totally reliable, 100% meant to be there pots that I had outside that were full of rainwater, <laughs> I filled this up. Because rainwater is apparently the best for them. Which, again, make, it enforces my theory that they use ericaceous because rainwater is slightly acidic, and so is ericaceous. So, anyway... I've got to fill these up with compost, obviously. It's going to be hard because I'm doing it one-handed. There we go. Well, whatever this compost is, I'm going to have a lot of leftover compost. Whoops. You saw nothing. I didn't spill any. And there we go. Oh, oh god. Oh, oh. Oh dear. I failed. So, that was definitely easy. Now I have to get the seeds out, and it's going to be hard. So I'm not going to do it one-handed, so it's a bit easier. Right, so I've taken the uh, seeds out of the packet. I've not planted them yet. Well, actually, I'd say I've taken the seeds out. I've taken them out of their first packet. They're just now on the outside one. So before you do that, before you plant them, Put the containers, or whatever you're using to hold them, in some clean rainwater. Shut up, fly. Uh, and leave them there for a few minutes to soak. Now make sure it isn't too deep. Mine is really shallow, because if it's too deep, it can, what's called, waterlog them, and that isn't good. So just leave them there to soak. Maybe make yourself a cup of tea, then come back. I decided to play with my dog while I was waiting. Because uh, the other dog, Poppy, is at the vets today and he's feeling a bit left out. Alright, so once you've let them soak for long enough, just place the seeds in. So, the way I recommend it is, depending on how many seeds you have, place that amount in your containers. So, I'll be right back once I've done that. Okay, so I've planted all the seeds in each one. Now, what I recommend doing, if you have any leftover compost... You don't need much, you just need a little bit, about a pinch, and just sprinkle it on top of the soil. Now they don't tell you to do this, you don't have to do this, but personally, that's what I'd like to do, just to make sure the seeds are slightly covered, so that when they first come out they don't get burnt. Especially in this greenhouse it can get quite hot, and obviously they're going to be in a little propagator as well, so uh, I don't want them to get burnt as they emerge. That wouldn't be good so in the end I put three in this one four in that one and four in that one which is very good because uh, on the packet it says they only come with six but obviously the packets always say that they only come with a certain amount for example my sensitive plants packet said they came with 30 and there are about 70 in there so um, yeah sometimes companies laziness is useful right so I've put enough in now so Provided you've let yours soak long enough, there's only really one more step. So, these plants are like a lot of sunlight. So, if you do have a conservatory, a greenhouse, or even just a south-facing window, that would be enough. Because they like a lot of sunlight. So anything like that would help them a lot. Or, if you don't have any of those, just put them in a windowsill and let them sit. So, you may have a little bit of trouble fitting them in. Uh, it took me a minute or two to work out how to put mine in, but I kind of fixed it with like that, so I just got to put the lid on. 
you might have to squeeze them together a bit, but that's okay because it won't damage the well, it won't damage any of it, so don't worry if that if you do have to squeeze them a bit. And there we go. So this is how to plant your very own Venus flytrap. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you all in the next episode. I hope you uh, subscribe and like this video. It means a lot to me. And if you have any suggestions at all, please leave them down in the comments below. Because I will definitely feature you in my next video. Bye.